What's happening guys, Mikey from Ammo Fitness again. Look, today's topic I want to talk to you about more topics on sleep. I'm gonna give you four wicked, wicked topics on how to get a better sleep. Now you're probably thinking, why do I need better sleep? Now, if I could actually include a another pillar to one of my programs, so it's already mindset, nutrition, and exercise, which I think are the fundamental three to getting a fit and healthy lifestyle, or the best of. If I could fit one more pillar in, I would definitely include sleep. So instead, I'm gonna make a pretty much a compilation of videos just to help you guys uh, break it down step by step uh, and just throw in a few steps here and there, otherwise I might talk your ear off. So today I wanna talk to you guys about four different steps to increasing a better sleep. Now, why do we need a better sleep? Well. Sleep literally is recharging your batteries. Now, you might have heard that before and you're probably thinking, how the hell does it recharge my batteries? Of course you know sleep, you need sleep. Everyone needs sleep unless you're a vampire. Uh, kudos to you if you are, but anyway. Recharging your batteries is like when you're going about your day, uh, you're pretty much building toxins in your body, uh, you're stressing out because of whatever, if you're a chilled person, it doesn't really matter, you're still using up things in your body that need to be flushed at the end of every single day. And that's pretty much where it happens, when you sleep. When you sleep, it's like your body goes into this shutdown mode and it's like, okay, time to recharge and get rid of all the waste. It starts filtering uh, because you're not using up the energy to do day-to-day -day things while you're actually thinking and operating during the day. When you calm down and your conscious mind actually goes to sleep, your subconscious mind and all the automated processes kick in to pretty much regenerate everything that you've done. So let's call it damage in a way during the day. So not only regulating hormones, getting rid of toxins, recharging your batteries, so your thyroid and adrenal glands, resetting all that uh, a part of your circadian clock, uh, you're literally preparing for the next day so you can actually operate efficiently and effectively. Now if we don't get an efficient sleep, but I'm sure you've been there before, you feel like crap because you are literally just thrashing exactly what you did the next, uh, the previous day. So your adrenal glands again, your thyroid, uh, you're building up more toxins in your body, you're building up the cortisol that you didn't get rid of the previous day. Uh, and of course, all the other stuff that's included when you actually get sleep. And if you're not regulating your hormones, your hormones are gonna be everywhere, and your hormones are literally the bosses of your own body, all right? So the way you feel, the way you think, the way your whole body operates is going to be all out of whack. You need sleep. Step one is being cool. Uh, now, I don't mean being awesome like an awesome person. I literally mean temperature-wise. Studies have actually shown that you get a better sleep when you're in a cooler environment, okay? Whether it be sleeping not under the sheets or just using literally just thinner sheets uh, before you go to bed. Now, depending on your climate, wherever you are, uh, if you're up in Queensland or something where the temperatures are hotter, you're probably doing that anyway. If you're somewhere colder and you actually do need sheets, there is for everyone a certain temperature where they're comfy and cozy, but if you can sleep just under that, it's said anything under 18 but above 14 is almost optimal. Now they've done some studies and stuff where they've actually strapped on uh, a cooler pack to the main organ that needs the most cooling out of everything, which is the brain. All right, the cooler pack pretty much sits around your head uh, and just cools that down. Now, if you think we're pretty much using our entire body during the day, now the thing that's most on at night time is actually our brain. All right, our brain is the powerhouse. It's pretty much in overtime, pretty much looking after everything that's going on throughout the entire body. It's doing so much you don't even realize. Even though our conscious mind is off or should be, our subconscious and all the automa uh, automated processes are operating at a speed you couldn't even imagine trying to take care of your body. Now cooling your body down is where it's at. So either sleep 
sleeping without sheets, even sleeping nude, I do that, it feels great. Maybe sleeping with a fan on or even having a hot shower. Now I know this sounds contradictory, but if you have a really, really hot shower, your temperature is gonna go up and through the normal processes, uh, processes of your body, your body's gonna wanna cool down, so it's gonna actually do what it needs to do to make it cooler. So by the time you get to bed, you're actually going to be in a cooler state. Uh, that's step number one. Step number two, you're actually going to bed on a reasonable time. You wanna set the exact same time almost every single day. So not only that you get into a routine, but you're actually going in accordance or with the grain of your circadian rhythm. All right, the circadian rhythm actually goes to the time of the earth. All right, so by the time the sun comes up and goes down, believe it or not, your body's doing exactly what the earth is doing. So how do you think animals and stuff uh, pretty much know when it's time to go to bed? They don't have wristwatches on or alarm clocks or iPhones for that matter. So that's how they know. So back thousands and thousands of years ago, that's pretty much how we did it as well. Uh, so the best, best sleep we actually can get is from around about, this is on average by the way, from around about 10 p.m. to 2 p.m. Now studies have also shown that people that don't get the sleep around this time are at a higher risk of almost any disease because of the lack of pretty much intensity or the lack uh, of quality of sleep that you're missing out on uh, within this four hour window. This four hour window, you're pretty much gonna get the best sleep that you can in any day. What you wanna do is pretty much not miss out on that window. All right, so set your time or alarm to actually go to bed or maybe set an alarm half an hour before to go to bed or like I've spoken about in previous videos, set up a cue, something like a, uh, read a book, meditation, have a bath, something that's actually going to cue you to needing to go to bed. Uh, that way you get to bed on time, you get that four hour window of maximum quality sleep and the next day, bam. Step number three, you wanna set up a sleep sanctuary. Now what I mean by this is you wanna set up your place of sleep for exactly that sleep. Alright, so if you actually work in your bedroom, uh, if you watch TV in your bedroom, uh, now this is like a big no-no, okay, because believe it or not, your brain is actually responding or it's actually correlating uh, sleep or where you sleep to entertainment or work and that's exactly where you don't want to be in a place of okay when you're trying to go to bed when you're trying to get your levels to calm down uh, when you're trying to stress less and all your brain can think about is oh maybe we might work soon or maybe we can watch a new TV series because your TV's there or your computer's there before I rant on too much all I'm trying to get at is Get rid of it. You literally want to set your bedroom up for a place of, I'm going to call it two things, sleep and sex, okay? Even though sex can be contradictory, there are a lot of benefits to actually a orgasm and even sex with a partner that's actually going to help you get a much restful sleep. Now you're probably thinking, well, what if I miss out on sex and you think, oh crap, I'm not gonna get a good sleep. Now that's not the thing either. So, bedroom, sleep, sex. Now, some other tips to actually set, setting your bedroom up to a sleeping sanctuary is literally even the color of the walls, maybe make them a warm color that's actually inviting you uh, to have a restful sleep. I know you're probably not gonna have a look at the walls when you're actually sleeping because your whole bedroom should be blacked out, uh, but it could just be like a trigger or a cue for you to go to bed because it's a warm color. It's something your brain relates to actually falling asleep. Even your sheets and your bed is a massive one. Obviously, if you're not comfy, then you're not going to get a very restful sleep, are you? So, obviously get the right bed, the right pillows, everything like that, and actually set your place up to a point of comfort so you're not actually thinking about anything except for what you should be doing, sleep. Now a lot of people are going to love this last tip. Tip number four is the big O. Orgasm, whether it be through uh, sex or masturbation, whatever you want to do, uh, obviously sex is going to be a lot more enhanced in terms of the chemical releasing effects uh, that it has to the body. Now an orgasm releases that many chemicals in the body that's that benefiting to not only good health, 
uh, but to getting such a good sleep, it's not even funny. All right, so just a few to mention is oxytocin, serotonin, and prolactin. Prolactin, all right, this is the main one I wanna cover. All right, so we all should know that serotonin is pretty much a happy hormone, um, and that's actually going to help us get a calming sleep, okay? So it's gonna stress less, so it's gonna make us stress less, it's gonna be able to just calm us down, and not to mention oxytocin. It actually has a sedation effect on us, so it's not only gonna calm us, it's actually going to help us get a better sleep uh, because of its effects on reducing cortisol, pretty much the thing that we do not want. The only thing that we don't want uh, that we get in the morning when we drink coffee, when we get stressed out. All right, so oxytocin is actually going to bring those cortisol levels down, which means a better sleep. Now, oxytocin gets released pretty much by even just touching a person uh, that's like a loved one, um, but especially when we have an orgasm. Okay, the big P, and it's not what you're thinking, prolactin. Prolactin is released when we have an orgasm, and it's highly responsible for pretty much putting us into one of the most deepest states of sleep, calming us down. All right, so it gets released and its effects can last for hours after having an orgasm. All right, so it's pretty much the reason why males can't go a second time unless they don't release too much. Uh, prolactin actually does cause a flaccid effect on the penis, uh, but we actually release as males four times the amount of prolactin as females, which is probably why we get such a sleepy state after we have sex and the females maybe stay awake. Uh, it does cause some sleepy effects, but if you're ever wondering why your partner's still so awake and you're pretty much out, that is the reason. The big P, prolactin, all right? So that's going to cause a very, very restful sleep as well. Bang! And that is it guys, the four steps to getting an absolute amazing sleep. Now I hope you can fulfill all these steps. If you do, I promise you, you will have the best sleep of your life. Heaps more tips to come, so even just introducing one tip at a time, or even just one tip at all, uh, you're going to uh, achieve the benefits that I've spoken about in this video. Hope this helps guys. Please feel free to jump across to our Facebook page, give that a like, and also make sure to jump across to our YouTube channel, which is getting updated every single week on more fit and healthy lifestyle tips to help you on your weight loss journey. So, till next time guys, love you to bits. I'll see you guys in the next video.